we're going to spend a lot of time talking about erythrocytes, and that's mainly because of how important erythrocytes are. So remember that they carry most of the oxygen around your body. A small amount of oxygen can dissolve into the plasma, but over 98% of your body's oxygen is carried around by your erythrocytes. So without erythrocytes, your cells don't get oxygen, and they die, and you die. So that's why we think they're pretty important. And the shape of erythrocytes is quite interesting. As opposed to being spherical or, or even cubed, erythrocytes are what we call biconcave disc shape. They're round but flattened, and they curve in a little bit. An erythrocyte is about 7.5 microns, that's about a millionth of a, of a meter, 7.5 microns across their long way, and about 2 microns tall if you look at them the short way. This weird shape, this biconcave disc shape, is important for a couple of reasons. One, it provides more surface area compared to the volume, so you get better exchange of oxygen. If you had a spherical cell, the part of the cell in the middle of the sphere is going to be far away from the edge and might not get good exchange of oxygen. With a flat cell, all areas of that cell are close to the surface and can exchange the oxygen well. The other thing is it allows them to stack up well going through blood vessels, so you can get nice movement of the erythrocytes to blood vessels. Something else that's important about erythrocytes is that they have a flexible cytoskeleton. So you remember the cytoskeleton is the protein network inside the cell that helps maintain its shape. And the cytoskeleton of erythrocytes is flexible. They can bend, and this is important because they can bend all the way in half to squeeze through narrow capillaries. So I told you an erythrocyte is about 7.5 microns, and your smallest capillaries are only 3 to 4 microns in diameter. So those erythrocytes have to fold almost in half to fit through. So the flexible cytoskeleton is important. Another thing about erythrocytes that makes them quite different from other cells is that they lack most organelles. Now, if you think about all the sorts of organelles that we've talked about before that are found in cells, we've got vesicles and Golgi apparatus and a smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, the nucleus, a lot of ribosomes. Those are all missing in erythrocytes. There's no nucleus in a mature erythrocyte. There's no DNA. There are no mitochondria. There are no ribosomes. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One reason is it leaves more room for transporting oxygen. The other reason is because without all those organelles, erythrocytes don't carry out cell division, they don't use cellular respiration, um, they don't replicate DNA, and so they're not using up oxygen. So the erythrocytes are basically oxygen-carrying machines. They don't do anything else. They're not using up the oxygen they carry for cellular respiration to make protein or anything like that. They just carry it where it's supposed to go. Now, since our erythrocytes are lacking most of their organelles, that makes a lot of space for hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is important because it's the hemoglobin that binds to the oxygen. Without hemoglobin in your red blood cells, it doesn't matter how many red blood cells you have, they can't carry oxygen if there's no hemoglobin in them. Hemoglobin is made of four different polypeptides. So if you remember what a polypeptide is, it's a string of amino acids. So there are four different strings of amino acids that have to come together to form the hemoglobin protein. So in the diagram, you can see we have one, two, three, four strands of amino acid, four polypeptides to make up hemoglobin. Each polypeptide cradles in its middle of its folded up structure a special molecule called heme. Each heme group is essentially a cage made of carbon and nitrogen that holds in its middle an iron atom. It's the iron atom held securely in the cage of heme that actually binds to the oxygen molecule to carry it around your body. So since each hemoglobin protein has four polypeptides, and each polypeptide has a heme group, we have four heme groups in each molecule of hemoglobin. That means each molecule of hemoglobin can carry up to four molecules of oxygen. Hemoglobin is also neat because it's what makes your blood red. The more hemoglobin you have, the redder your blood will be. The less hemoglobin you have, the paler your blood will be. And hemoglobin also changes color a little bit depending on whether it's uh, got a lot of oxygen on it or it's not fully oxygenated. Fully oxygenated 
hemoglobin is very bright red. So the blood in your arteries that's full of oxygen is very bright red. Hemoglobin that's deoxygenated is a darker red. And so the blood in your veins that's deoxygenated is a darker red than the blood in your arteries. I think it's important to point out for a moment here that blood is never blue. At least human blood is never blue. Um, in a lot of drawings and textbooks, to make it easier to tell the difference between oxygenated and deoxygenated blood, they color oxygenated red and deoxygenated blue. That's just fake coloring in the pictures. Real deoxygenated blood is red. It's a little darker red than oxygenated blood, but it's still red.